Hey everyone, welcome back to Mini Bike Mike's Garage. This might be the roughest CT70 that I have tried to rescue. Maybe, if not in a long time, maybe forever. Um, but the time this video is over, this is probably going to be a long one, guys, so hang on there, hang in there. But by the time this video is done, we're going to ride this bike. It may or may not be with this engine. We may have to throw a life in it or do something else. But we're going to attempt to see if we can get this one to, to have it run under its own power first. This is the original engine to this bike. Uh, but it is it is locked up. I mean, fellas, it's locked up bad. Uh, someone... Uh, I'm not sure if it was the person I got it from or someone else. Someone has kind of started to try and figure out what's going on. The, the carburetor is, is unbolted from the, from the head. You can see that the, the cover's off, and actually they've taken the, the gear, uh, the cam gear off, and they've just got it kind of zip-tied to, uh, to the cam chain there so it doesn't fall out. Uh, the exhaust is off. The nuts and bolts are all off here. I haven't even taken this off. This is my first look at this bike. It looks like the parts are there. Uh, every cable is stuck and frozen. The, the throttle cables broke, but the throttle doesn't move. The knobs are frozen. The wheel is around backwards. The, the sprocket's on this side. Uh, I can get the counter sprocket to roll, but the shifter doesn't do anything. I don't know, guys. It's uh, it's pretty it's pretty rough. Let me uh, bring you in for a closer look at it. So this is a Honda CT70 K0, the very first model they built. Uh, it's one of the last ones that they built. The last couple months. These were produced through uh, August of 71, and this one has a 6 of 71 tag. The, they were introduced in June of 69. Interesting, I'm in central Indiana, and this has made it all the way from California at some point. But, uh, I mean, it's fairly complete. Everything is kind of there. I, I don't remember seeing a headlight. We might be missing. We've got the bucket. We've got the speedometer. You know, the exhaust is there. It's got the typical, you know, spot right here we're going to have to repair uh, once we get an engine up and running. You know, it's got rims and tires. They're all flat, but hopefully we can resurrect something there. It's got the fenders on it. Uh, I even got a box of parts so we've got a seat we've got the cradle and the spark plug guard got a chain guard you tell me is that heat is that what's taking that off somebody heated that up We've got the cover for the engine. We've got a tail light bracket. No tail, the lens is gone, but we've got the bracket. That's good. Uh, this is the brake plate for this rear. And then there is a bag. The rest of this is empty. We've got a bag of goodies. We've got bags in bags. All right, so there's the cam cover. It does have the copper washer and the bolt with it, so that's good. Uh, that's an empty bag. This has just got some miscellaneous hardware. All right, there's the there's the nuts and the washers for that top, the, the cover on the top of the head. Another empty bag. That's got the, uh, the two donut uh, for the uh, spacers for the exhaust that fit up around the exhaust. That's got that in it. And then this looks to have the flywheel. 
Yep, we've got the, the nut, we've got the washer and the woodruff key, but this thing must have spent some time in water, underwater, something. There's the, the woodruff key in the... But wow. It's so... I, the magnets are still working. Yeah. The magnets work, so that's still good. So, all right. So there's that. Uh, about the only thing that's not original on the bike that I can tell is this... I'm going to move my tripod here a little bit. Is this bracket or cover here, uh, it's got the extended version that goes up and underneath the hinge for the seat. And that is something that was introduced after this bike. On this particular model, the K0, this piece just followed this line around and did not have this little section you see right here. That came on the next model, the K1 and and after so the handlebars aren't really too bad as far as you know how bent they are i think we can use those you can look down through there and kind of see that obviously the paint and decals are in rough shape but that's not anything we're going to worry about today because we're just we're just going to try and get it to run we've got a horn button we're missing the, the high-low switch. So, yeah, we did not find a headlight in uh, in our box of goodies there, so we don't have a headlight. All right, uh, I'm going to get set up. I've got my ultrasonic cleaner going. So I think I'm the first thing I'm going to do is get the carb off, and we're going to see if we can get the slide out of it. And we'll get that taking a bath in the ultrasonic cleaner. And then while it's doing its thing, because even if we don't get use this engine, I'd still, you know, it's a good carburetor. Hopefully it's a good carburetor. We can use it on something else down the road. But man, look at the, uh... sorry, I'm kind of shaky here. Ah, the points are broke. Let's see, I bet they don't snap. Now, see the points see right there. It's got a break in the, in the, in the spring. We may have to pull the, well, we got to get it, <laughs> we got to get it to turn over first, and then we will, we'll worry about all this, so, all right, let me uh, yank some tools out, let's get set up, let's get into this thing. All right, so like I said, the first thing I want to do is get the car, or yeah, get the car, oh boy, we just, the whole bolt is turning on us. This, I got feeling this thing is going to fight us the entire way. Hey, there's one out. Okay, I started to loosen this. This has got uh, a, this is the top bolt that holds the engine in. Um, it's it's I'm turning the entire thing. Hang on just a second. I probably should have hit hit all of this with some with some break it loose juice. Let's try tightening it first. See if that will. Yeah, that did it. Sometimes you can tighten them up just a little bit and that kind of breaks them free. Uh, it's already loose here at the intake. Come off of there. Oh my, oh, <laughs> okay, I gotta cut the uh, fuel lines, must still be. Now, you guys are gonna love this. Wait till you see this. Still got the original fuel lines on it. Got the, the reserve has the, uh, has the lines on it. I'll, come, I'll show you here in just a second. Okay, we've got the brake cable is hooked. Okay, wow. I think we've had some critters. That's inside there. And uh, 
the other portion didn't didn't come out it's got they were fond of whatever these nuts are it's just packed look at that all right i'm going to well let's see well i got you on camera oh my goodness let's see if we can get the cap off of the carb i'm gonna zoom you guys out just a little bit Man, we're gonna have a mess. We've got hickory nuts or whatever these are just falling out everywhere. What do you think? I think that cat that slide is gonna slide. Oh heavens no. No, it is not. And the cables broke off on it. You know what? I think we're just going to put that in the car in the cleaner as is. Let me uh Let's pull the bowl off and see what the bowl looks like. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> uh, I got a mess. Yeah, the whole inside of the frame is just packed full of rodent stuff. I'm not sure. The guy brought this bike to me, so I'm not sure where it spent its life that it got this much. Let's try tapping that. Oh, just fell right off. Uh, well, it's powdery, but I've definitely seen worse. Yeah, I've, I've definitely seen worse than that. So I'm going to go ahead and take uh, spend a minute and take this arrest the rest of the way apart, get the intake off of it, get the, uh, the air cleaner housing off of it, and see if I can pull the pin, get the float out of it, and then so I can get this thing in the cleaner so then we can, uh, while it's cleaning, we can tear the rest. But I, I, I'm not going to show you that. I'm just going to take this the rest of the way apart. I've got the carb all taken apart as much as I can get. Uh, we did have one casualty uh, broke off where the pin goes through the float. See that broke off? I'm talking about right on top of here. Hopefully that will hold the pin in. We may have to do something about that. The choke is stuck. I can't get it loose. Oh, I need to take out the uh, air screw and the idle screw yet, but I've got everything else taken apart. It all came out. Uh, we're going to throw it in the uh, ultrasonic. The slide is still in there. I have not. Nope. Yeah, that's just the choke. But you can see the slide still in there. Hopefully after a run through the ultrasonic, that'll come out. All right. I've got the carburetor cooking and uh, doing its thing. Uh, when I took the carburetor off, I mentioned the uh, fuel lines. See how this fuel line has those lines on it that's that's a stock that's an original reserve fuel line and then the smooth one is the regular fuel line thought I'd better show that to you since i mentioned it i think i want to go ahead and take the top end off as you can see i took the fender loose because i don't think you can get the top end off without um, without with the fender on there now now's a good time to say it for the 150th time I am not an engine guy um, I can do some some of the basics you know you've seen me replace a top end and do some of those things but uh, If it comes to something down in here, I, I typically pass on that stuff. It's just not something I'm interested in tackling. Wow. <clears throat> this thing is going to fight us at every turn.
That's not separate. I do have all the bolts out of it, don't I? And that one's out. What the heck is holding that on there? Okay, I think I'm starting to see start to see some separation now. Wow. Almost makes me feel like I missed something, but I'm pretty sure we have it. It should just slide right off of these studs. It's stuck on that one right there. I wonder if it's moved or are we just pulling that out of the uh, out of the case. I can't tell. probably watched that long enough probably bored with that i'm gonna keep doing the same thing i'm doing for the next uh hour and try and get that head off of there guys i've been doing this a long long time i have never seen one this stubborn you should see the crap it's in the cylinder that must have came down through the, uh, the carburetor must have been off of it for quite some time. There's all kinds of stuff in this bore. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Woo, I, don't, I don't think this one's going to turn over. I think this, just getting this head off, is just the beginning of the troubles for this thing. Fellas, I'm seeing a, a life and build in our future here. <sighs> Do you guys watch uh, Vice Grip Garage? What would Derek be saying about now? <laughs> I'm sure he'd have some words for this thing. Unbelievable. Well, I thought maybe I'd get it off there while you guys were watching, but I got to keep working on it. Well, fellas, it's pissed me off.
I hate you to do it, but that was the only way that was coming off of there. Wow. And there is no, absolutely no way we're getting that cylinder off of that piston. Uh, let me take you out. Of, around to this other side, maybe. Come on, focus inside there. Look at that. Look at this mess. That's sad. But yeah, we're we're not doing anything with this, guys. Okay, so if we're gonna ride this on this video, this is uh, we're gonna throw that in it over there, that little life and that black life and you see, because yeah, we're not we're not tackling this anymore. Wow. Okay, I worked up a little bit of a sweat on that. I probably look horrible, but uh, that's the way it goes. I think I'm going to go ahead and yank this out of here. It's about two o'clock. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, I'm going to take a little time, yank this out of here, kind of get some parts off of it. I'm uh, going to go home, have dinner with my wife, and then she has a meeting tonight. So I'll, hopefully I'll be able to come back later this evening and we'll throw that life in and take it for a spin but uh, I think I'm just gonna put you guys on time lapse and just go ahead and strip the rest of this bike down I'm going to stop the time lapse here for just a second. What do we have here? Snakeskin? I hope you're gone, little feller. This bike's been sitting in the corner here at the shop for quite some time. I don't think anything's in there. I have absolutely no idea what this is. But, I mean, it is affixed to the side of this frame, and I can't get it loose. It's... I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, my filming's letting you down here. I'm not sure what that is. Guys, I got to tell you, I've seen some things in my life, but I, I've never had a bike like this one. I cannot, uh, I've got a, uh, a, a coil attachment there. I cannot get it off. The crap that was inside this thing is just amazing. I'm still not sure if I got it all out up through there. I might have. Wow. I, I've... Uh, I've seen some rough bikes. This one might be the roughest bike I've ever seen. Well, as you can see, this es escalated pretty quickly. Uh, I, I gotta be honest with you. I had zero intentions of taking this bike all the way down to the frame. My intentions were today were to hopefully get the, the stock engine running and just kind of do a, a rescue on this thing, clean it up a little bit. Uh, but, the engine fought me for a long time. 
Uh, every single nut, bolt, thread on this thing is just, it, they're just toast. And it, it, I need to go through the entire thing with uh, a tap and die and, and just clean up every single thread on that. So uh, here's where I'm at. It's, uh, I got to quit on it today. It's, uh, I got to head to the house. And so I've got it all stripped down. Uh, I lied earlier. I said I, I would probably come back later this evening and work on it. I'm not going to. This thing kicked my ass. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, I, you know, as you can see, hell, I had to get the acetylene torch out and, and cut off the, the, the nut on the, the coil because it was just spinning in the frame and the housing on it. Uh, I couldn't get the brake pedal. I, I wrestled with the brake pedal for almost an hour. Finally had to, to just heat it up to get it to swell so it would come off of the shaft. So I've got it all off, now I can clean it up. But, uh, you know, it'd just be a real disservice to this bike just to just throw an engine in it and and just, just so that we said we can ride it. I'm not gonna paint it, I'm not gonna restore it, uh, but I am gonna at least give it a little bit of love and go through it, clean it up, uh, like I said, re-tap, re, you know, clean out all the threads and everything and clean up this mess and all this stuff that was came out of it and you know we're gonna we're gonna give it some love and try and do it right so uh honestly at this point i think i'm gonna call it a day on it and i'll come back tomorrow and we'll start wiping it down give it the old wd-40 bath and clean it up and start you know just start going through we may see if i've got some gators and we can replace some of these things and and uh you know Anyway, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. All right, guys, we're back for day number two on this Honda CT70K0. Uh, and what a fight it gave us yesterday. And I came in early this morning to try and get a little bit of a head start. And I chased all the threads and did the things I said I was going to do. I went through basically every part on the bike to make sure that uh, we could assemble it today in a timely fashion and uh, hopefully take it for a spin. So you, as you can see, I put a few parts back on the bike. Uh, I went ahead and threw the life and engine in the frame. Uh, I put the fenders back on. Uh, I've run the brake cables, the, um, uh, the high-low switch and the horn button. Now, I was a little bit surprised when uh, when we first looked, started looking at this bike yesterday, I knew it had a horn button, but there was no wiring coming out of the handlebar. And you can tell by how kinked it is, if you can see that on the video, all of this wiring was in this section right here. They had stuffed it in. And, um, so I was really pleasantly surprised when I pulled that out and we actually had the full horn button wiring. Unfortunately, we don't have a horn. Uh, there was no horn on it, so we're not gonna have a horn. But the wiring's there when, when I do decide to put a horn on it. Um, I went ahead, sit there. Uh, it's got a Trail Buddy simple harness in it. <clears throat> Trail Buddy TB515, their 12 volt simple harness. I worked with them a few years ago uh, to try and work up a harness that would be just almost plug and play for these bikes if you put in a, uh, an aftermarket engine in a, in a uh, K0. And it's close. Uh, there's a couple, couple plugs here on the end that they, in my opinion, they should probably swap. They've got females where they should have males and, and so forth, but that's not a big deal. They actually give you a little bag of parts so if you do need to swap some ends and it comes with a full uh instruction sheet with what all the wires do i really haven't done anything to the harness but two things one i don't like this big you know bulky sheath thing that they put on there so i cut that off from that comes out and goes up to the headlight and i just rewrapped it with tape so i got rid of that uh, i also took the the plastic off right here where the uh, wires hook to the engine. And then the only other thing I did, which I'm not sure why they do this, there is provisions for a kill switch. There's wiring and it has a little plug. It's down inside the frame here. 
but it's right here. It, this is where it's at. And so you got to have wiring to come all the way to here. Well, most kill buttons and kill switches don't have wiring that's that long. So the other thing I've done, other than taking those plastic pieces off, I ran a another wire up through with the harness. Um, this th uh, aftermarket throttle that I put on here has a button. I think it's actually a starter button. We're going to use it as a kill button. But we're going to plug... Well, and I just said... No, it still wouldn't have reached, I don't think. It might have. <laughs> Usually they're not that long. But uh, anyway, so I ran a separate wire up to the headlight so that we can run a kill switch. Uh, other than that, it's pretty much just stock. So uh, I think I think I want to get it on, the, uh, on its tires first so we can get it off of that stand. So I think that's... I think that's what we'll tackle first. Let me, let me pick you up and show you the table over here. So like I said, I came in early this morning and I went through. I didn't clean anything up. I just got it to where it's usable. So um, the hubs, the brake levers were stuck on both of them. So I got those freed up. Um, and got those working and I put new brakes on them. What I'm talking about is, is this, that was, that was rock solid. I couldn't move it. It took me a little while to, had to actually throw some heat on it to get it out and clean it up. Um, oh, I fixed the exhaust, which I'll throw in a, uh, an extra little video, uh, on what I did there. I put the fuel line on the tank I, since the carburetor I'm going to use on this just has one feed, I've just blocked off the regular, and we're just going to go from the reserve line. But, you know, like I said, I aired the tires up. They seem to be holding air, so that's good. Uh, I pulled out some extra parts we'll need, like, the, like a headlight, and I get that from uh, TB Parts. And that is the... Headlight assembly for a K0. Hmm. It actually, I wonder if they put it in the wrong box because that's the Z50 K3 through 78. That's a different headlight. Don't look at that. Uh, this is the box I pulled that headlight out of, but the description doesn't seem to match that. Um, anyway, all right, I'm going to get set up and we're going to start putting this bike together. I'm going to start with the front tire. really fortunate this bike actually had most of its pieces uh, all the spacers and and everything which was really nice for as rough as as rough as it's been trying to get it cleaned up and get everything working at least I had all the parts looks like I need to let my stand a little bit Uh, I did go through and I pulled out the speedometer gear and it was flattened out. So somebody's had the tire off uh, at some point and either put a new tire on it or had to fix it or do something because the speedometer gear, the tabs on it were, were flattened out. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there uh, I have a video on that back a ways, uh, just look that up, speedometer fix or something, CT70 speedometer fix. All right, pretty simple there. Let's go ahead and hook up the cables and everything while we're over here. I think I've, I got the cables. I think those came from Mike's Mini Trail, if I'm not mistaken. mistaken. Uh, I will go through and put
put all the description of all the parts that I used uh, in the, or I'm sorry, I put a link in the description to all the different parts I've used on this bike. Like these cables and I'll look up that correct uh, headlight assembly. Um, just some of the, the, the wiring harness and those sorts of things. I think I want to throw on the headlight next. Now I had a whale of a time this morning getting the speedometer cable to go into the the uh, the cable to go into the speedometer. Uh, on that end, it's it's a little square. The speedometer cable is is square and it fits into a square hole into the speedometer drive and. You know, I think without having, I don't think it had been hooked up in a while. I don't know what all was in there, but man, I had, I clean, I'd take a pick and clean on that to get that cable to, to go up into that speedometer. So once I got it in there, I didn't take it out. That's why it's still in there. <laughs> I was like, okay, we're just going to leave that alone. I'm not gonna do the wiring yet. Uh, I'm gonna get it on all, get it on its wheels, and so I can roll it up here a little closer to me and so forth. I am gonna go ahead and hook up this speedometer before that falls out from up there. So this end has uh, it's a little it's forked, and so it fits over a little slot that's inside here. Sometimes you gotta spin the wheel to find that right spot that it goes. Yep, I've got it jammed in there and it's spinning the whole thing. There it went. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, let's uh move to the back and see if we can't get the back end put together the sprocket on it seemed like it was in okay shape so we're going to leave it We'll start by just kind of hanging the axle and that little spacer on there. Oh, we need to come up considerably higher, don't we? Okay, hang on just a second. Let's lift it up here. These, these lifts are really handy. And it has to be one of the better things I've bought.
I'm gonna go ahead while I'm over here. There's a little bolt that runs through uh, for the brake stay. I'm gonna go ahead and put that on here real quick while I'm on this side. Actually, you know what, before we put the chain on, let's go ahead and let it down and roll it into place. Get this stand out of the way. done with that. I'm going to take that shock loose. This is just a standard 88 Tell you what, I'm doing this backwards. Putting it on the wrong one first. Typically, it's an 88 lengths for the, these. Yeah, there we go. It is. Looks pretty good. Let me tighten up this side real quick. Perfect. Okay, I think uh, I'm going to move to foot pegs. Tell you what, I think. Uh, no, let's see. What order do I want to do this in? You know, I don't want to have to take something back off. Pegs, yeah. Yeah, let's go, let's go to the pegs, and then we'll put the exhaust and then the engine guard. Now on these pegs, I modify them just slightly. These life and engines are a little bit wider. I've used a ton of these engines, so I'm quite familiar with putting them on here. So I gotta I modify the pegs just a little bit. All right, you see that knot right there, and that's what keeps it from actually going the, the peg folding all the way over. You got to get rid of it on the right side. It does allow the peg, but it's only going to go up and hit the engine at most now.
but you got to get rid of that to clear. And then the other thing you have to do is you actually have to space. Uh, I cut like five eighths of an inch long, uh, half inch round tubes that will space the foot pegs down just slightly. And that gives you a little extra room for clearance on the width on this right side. I also like it because it lowers the pegs a little bit, which makes it, for me, a tad bit better riding position. Uh, I don't feel quite like my knees are all the way up into my chest like I do on a standard CT70. Okay, I think I'm gonna flop you back around to this side and let's put the, put the exhaust on and then put the engine guard. Okay, I must do one thing. I'm gonna go ahead and put this little piece onto the brake so I can get it on with no trouble, get this cable on before we put the exhaust on there and get, get some things in the way. Uh, I tested the stock brake switch, no good, frozen like everything else. And uh, I got it to work a little bit, but just no consistency. So I got rid of it. We put a new one on. The good thing about cutting this exhaust, a couple things. One, that now we can lengthen it to the length we need because the engine's longer. And two, we can take still take advantage of the original mounts. You know, we don't have to alter you know, back here. Or we can actually utilize this mount, the stock mount, which is nice. forgot to grab a exhaust gasket so I am going to I'm gonna wiggle that in there uh, let me go get an exhaust gasket all right so while I had you off camera I went ahead and put the shield on and that's kind of nice it, it covers some of that uh, Frankenstein -y welds we got going on there. Uh, I've threw a exhaust gasket up in here. One of those crushed gaskets. Let's see if we can... And I'm hoping that all this patching and everything cuts down on some noise and exhaust leaks because that was a that was a pretty good size hole. I'm sure it would have uh, it would have been pretty loud, and it still may be. It looks like the baffle is in still in the end of this. That's looking, feeling pretty good. Give this one a few more ugg duggas here. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. 
Let's see if we can get the rest of the brake pedal. Uh, let's see. No, I'm sorry. I'm getting this stuff. I wanted to put the engine guard on it. Let's see where, how far zoomed in do I have you guys? Maybe a little too far. We're going to hang it from a couple different bolts up here on the top. We're going to have clearance. I think we're going to be just fine. I'm trying to get it on top of the uh, foot pegs to help take up some of the space. I didn't cut any spacers for the front. I probably should have. Yeah, I probably should have, but oh well, we're we'll be all right for right now. This bike's gonna it's gonna come back apart. You know, at some point we're going to That's not the right socket light. Is it? Nope, we need a 13. Yeah, this will this bike will more likely come back apart at some point. Maybe clean it up a little bit more. Who knows? We might even throw some paint on it. I doubt it. But don't hit those too tight. Don't, don't rip the uh, aluminum threads out of out of things. Okay, let's go. Now I need a 10 millimeter socket, which I didn't grab. always like to start fresh every day with a clean workspace and so I always put all my tools away you guys have seen me do that before I spend half the video going <laughs> getting tools again jump on jump on those brake items not looking too bad is it i don't have i need to we're not gonna worry about it in this video but i'll need to put some kind of wrap around i need that's just gonna rattle on there but we're not gonna worry about it today let's see how's this all go together like that. There's a washer and a cotter pin right there.
not feeling too bad. Let's give this a break here. Oh yeah, that's not bad at all. I have not adjusted the uh, the rear one. And it's probably going to need some adjustment, but we're not going to worry about it right now. We want to ride. Okay, guys, where are we at? Let's put the, uh, oh, I need to put the springs on. This one goes on the brake pedal itself. See how one is closer to the edge and that one's centered. This one goes down on the pedal. This one goes on the pin that's on the frame. And of course, I, I don't have tools again. Let me grab a pair of pliers. that one and then this other spring it goes from this little arm that sticks out and it goes up to your brake switch there's a hole in this little pin that it slides through something like that you might have that brake too tight adjustable things once we get it up and running now let's uh let's put the fuel tank in it oh you know what before we do that we gotta put the coil in it and do some electrical uh where is my coil? Almost got ahead of myself. All right, so let's feed this down. Plug that onto the plug so we know how, know that we uh, don't pull it back too far. All right, your wiring harness has Two sets of similar looking wires. I've got the ones for the brake switch already plugged in. Those are black and green and yellow. Then there is a, another two pair and they're, they're taped together. See, you know these two are the two that go together. One of them's green, that's the ground for the coil. And the other one, oh no! My coil is missing the uh, the bullet connector. Huh. All right, hang on a second. But it that's black and yellow, and it goes into the black and yellow other you know that's on the harness. So hang on a second. I got I got to do an electrical repair here. We got to pull a bullet, put a, a bullet connector on there. All right. So I actually used one of the connectors that came extra in that Trail Buddy package with the wiring harness. That worked out really nice. So plug that in. The coil does not need to be mounted because it has the two wires. It has a green ground wire. So for right now, I'm just going to let it just lay down into the bottom of right here on top of the engine. Um, there again, we are probably going to take this bike apart at some point. And I can mount it solid then if I want to. Uh, okay, now I think we're ready for the fuel tank. I always put a little extra line on there. And we'll snip that off, cut it shorter.
the seat hinge on here. I'm not going to run a battery. The wiring harness has provisions for a battery. We're not going to use one. Uh, there is also an extra ground wire that has an eyelet on it. I am going to go ahead and, and use that right now and just ground it to the frame to make sure everything is good and hooked together. and a core or a voltage regulator you can't screw these up they two completely different style plugs CDI voltage regulator and we're just going to just let those just sit in there also this is the hot lead for the battery you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wrap a little piece of tape around it. Just so it doesn't short out against the frame. Yeah. Just, just have a, just make sure we don't burn something up. Okay. Uh, before we put the seat on, I think I'll go ahead and put the tail light on it. I've already ran the wiring out the back. I put a 12 volt bulb in it. That's a uh, an 1157 bulb for the since the engine is 12 volt. I did already check the wiring. Everything should be good. It, I got it to light up with the battery charger anyway. Hopefully the engine lights it up Uh oh, what have I done? Was the bolt not long enough to go through all that? Uh, I'm pushing it out. And they've got the ground wire hooked right here on the mount on the fender. Typically it comes up here and hooks to one of these bolts up here, but I didn't change it. We'll leave it there. Hopefully it'll work. If it doesn't, then we'll change it. So I've got two or three wires back here. I'm gonna grab a little screwdriver real quick. The harness has three wires coming out of it. It's got a green ground, which we're not going to use since we've got it, the light is grounded to the frame right here to the fender. So we're not gonna use that one. And then uh, there is a brown that just hooks up to the brown of the tail light. Let 
maybe. There we go. And that's the, uh, the running light. And then this green and yellow plugs into the green and yellow. And that will be your brake light whenever you hit your front or rear brake. Oh, don't squish it, Mike. Good enough. There we go. Okay. I don't have a lens. We're not going to worry about a lens right now. I think I'm just going to put the old seat on it. It's kind of broken up and so forth, but at this point it matches the bike. So we don't want to put a new seat or anything on it. Probably don't need to tighten it down, but it will. Sorry, I'm gonna get in front of you here. Is it? Yeah, it's somewhat centered. Not too bad. Boy, it's really broken down. Okay. Uh, what do you think? Not looking too bad. Not looking too bad, is it? The wires on this Life and Engine and on this uh, on this Life and Engine and the Trail Buddy harness just match up perfectly wire to wire yellow to yellow white to white black and red to black and red blue and white to blue and white and they even put even though this harness i guess you could use it on a k1 uh also that has a neutral indicator light a k0 doesn't have a neutral indicator light so uh it actually had the harness has a wire in there for it and so i've plugged it in but we won't use that up in the headlight because, like I said, there, there is no indicator light on a K0 for neutral. So We're not going to be able to put the chain guard on it today because the chain guard needs to be modified uh, to fit the contour of the Lifen cover here. This, this shape is different than the uh, the stock Honda, so we're not going to put a chain guard on it yet. I'll have to modify that. And there again, that's there. I have video on that. If you want to see how that's done, there's a couple different ones. tighten too much of that stuff because it is uh it is aluminum and you can strip the thread somewhere i've got a shift lever guys our table over here is almost empty getting close ah you know what i wonder if i should have put this on dang on it dang it mike screwed up Let's put this on first. That looks about where I'd want it. Did I have a 10 millimeter wrench? I did. Okay. Take two. Now, let's hope that'll go on there with the... Yeah, it will. Good. 
good enough. Oh yeah, looking good, looking good. Let's go ahead and throw the carburetor on it. Now I, the engine comes with a carburetor, but I've been using these uh, nibbies. Get it on Amazon. It's a 24 millimeter carb. Um, I'll put a link in the description to that also. But I've been running these recently on some of my clone engines, the, the Lifens and the, 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 like that Ice Bear Champion and that Amigo Rocky that I got. And I've been pretty happy with them. Come on. That takes an eight millimeter. Okay. Uh oh, our throttle cable. Huh, the little piece here on the end has fallen off. Oh well. It'll be all right. It's not like it's going to go anywhere. Let's see. Spring. There's a little washer, a little plastic piece that goes on before you put the slide on here. Holds everything in place. That's good. Make sure you don't have it 180 degree out. Make sure it falls all the way. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna put that behind there, I think. Okay. That's good. I use a 3 16 line. So everything's good and tight. Nope, I did not put a shut off in line yet, nor have I put a filter. We're just gonna rock it. Nor do I have an air filter for that. You know, I might have an air air cleaner for that, air filter for that. Oh, I didn't put the uh, I didn't put the thing around the tank. Oh well, not a not a killer. All right, guys, let's uh, move around. I think we are down to the wiring and the headlight. I do see we still have a. Kickstarter here. Put that on. Tighten this up because dummy Mike has made the mistake of putting those on there and just go, oh, it'll be all right, not tighten it down, and then starts stripping off of the, the shaft, and that's not good. Okay. Guys, we are close, close, close to throwing some fuel in this and seeing if it'll fire up. Looks like I need to run the wiring through the through the headlight. Let's see. I don't really know where to stand so that you guys can see this the best. 
Maybe if I go off to the side here. Let's, let's try that. And then that way I can stand over here. Yeah, let's do that. All right, this first wire I'm going to feed in here is that kill button wire that was way longer than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> All right, so there's that. Uh, the next one is the horn button that we don't have a horn, but we'll put it into the headlight anyway. Okay, next, this is the front brake, the wiring for the front brake switch on the, on the front brake cable. There's that. Oh, here is the wiring for the high-low switch that's on the handlebar. Come on. All of you. There's three of you. I need you all to play right. Oh, no, 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 no. What is going on here? There. Okay, there they are. And then lastly, it's this mess that goes with the harness. I'm going to run it up through this big hole here at the bottom. Okay, I'm going to back you up just a little, maybe. I've gone over this before, but we're going to do it again. The In this harness, I'm going to run the headlight off of the stator. I'm going to run it off of AC. So the headlight will only work when the... Um, when the engine is running. So you take your three wires from your high-low switch. The brown one is the power feed. So I'm gonna plug it into the yellow wire that's on the harness. Now I've got power coming up the yellow wire up to the high-low switch. Depending on if you have it in high or low, it's gonna come down the blue or the white. The blue is high and the white is low. So those just get plugged into the blue and white wires on the headlight. The headlight needs to be grounded, so there's a green. So this harness has uh, multiple just solid greens in it. Now be careful, there is a green with a yellow stripe for the brakes. Don't plug it into that. Okay, so we've got that. So that is the headlight. Uh, let's do this front brake switch. These are the two wires. The, it has a red, which needs 12 volt power. In this case, since our, our bulbs and everything are 12 volt. So that is the solid blacks that are in this harness, the Trail Buddy harness. The solid black is 12 volt. When the key is on, uh, if you have a battery, It'll run directly off of, without the engine running. It will send power up that black wire. I'm not running a battery, so it won't get power until the engine is running. Okay, so now you've got power coming up the black wire into the red wire of the switch. But we need to come out this green and yellow to uh, send power to the brake light. So here is where Trail Buddy, the harness, has a female green and yellow. Well, the switch has a female green and yellow. So you could change those. I mean, you could cut this off and put a, a, a male bullet connector, but I just happen to have a couple jumpers. So I'm just going to plug that into there. Then now I've got another male that will plug into the brake switch. All right, so that's the brake switch. Uh, what else do we have? The horn we're not going to mess with. Uh, 
we've got this, this is the blue for the high beam indicator in the uh, speedometer. It plugs into the other side of this dual male or du dual female that's part of the headlight. So now when high beam lights are turned on and turns on the high beam uh, part of the headlight and it illuminates the light in the speedometer. This bulb holder is really rusty and really iffy. I played with it for a while trying to clean it up and kind of got it to work. Um, so it may or may not work when we put this all together. You know, you got to kind of fiddle with it. So, okay, what else do we have? The other light up here is the uh, illumination for the speedometer. It's got a solid green, which is a ground. So we're going to find another solid green in the harness and plug that in. And then we're going to find a black, which gives it power and plug that into the brown. And oh, that's a little, little too loose. Okay, so now we've got power coming up to that light and it's grounded. Uh, this is for a horn, which we don't have. And so is this other light green. These are horn wires, which we don't have. This is a green with a red stripe, neutral indicator, which we don't have. So now we are down to, what are we down to? Okay. Uh, the other thing Trail Buddy does, we have to send power back to the, to the running light and the tail light. And that is this brown wire, and it needs power from one of the black wire, and they're both female, so we're going, I made another jumper. And plug those two together. All right, now, the last thing we're down to is that kill switch. So this is the black wire that I ran up here to plug into the kill switch. And then it needs a ground. Is there any more green grounds? Yes, right there's one. And that, fellas. So the only thing we didn't use was the neutral indicator wire and the 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 horn button would plug into this wire, this light green one. I'll go ahead and plug it in. And then these two wires are, are, would plug into a horn that we don't have. Okay. Now, let's see if we can stuff it all up in there. and not have any shorts or burn anything up. Do all that kind of goodness. We got a lot of wires. J just stuff them, it it's okay. It Don't worry about it. Uh, the other thing, this headlight bucket is supposed to have a captured nut in the bottom of here, which it was gone. So I found a, a long, a long bolt. And I'm hoping it's long enough for me to catch it with this nut on the back. It is awesome. Now, last thing we need to do is tighten that headlight down. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's spinning. I should have tightened those down before I put the... It's all right. Good enough. Guys, I think we've got it put together. Well, we, need, we need fuel, don't we? We need to put... 
put some go juice in it. Let's see, I think I'll let it down just a little bit so it's not quite so high. And what did we forget? You know, we didn't do any kind of ties to the handlebars or anything yet, so. Take that off. You guys are probably looking too high now, aren't you? That ought to be plenty, more than enough. Well, moment of truth, fellas. Uh, I think I'm on, I don't, I, don't, I don't like standing on that wobbly table. got uh, low rider shocks the rear shocks are shot and they're sticking all right so choke on key on because I got to take you outside. We, we got to ride it, right? Still got an exhaust leak somewhere. I might need to, to weld this connection I haven't welded yet. All right, let's see if our... We've got uh, a running light. Does this light get any brighter? We, there goes brakes. Yay! Brake light! Uh, I'm going to try the front brake. Yeah. yeah, we even got lights all the way around. Alright, I'm going to take you guys outside and let's just rip it around. Alright, uh, we'll rip it around the parking lot. Well, let's see what she does. Bit of 
Man, I tell you what, there's, uh, there's not a whole lot more fun than one of these with a 125 on it. Speedometer worked, 35 or so, that was great. So I'm gonna take you guys inside, we'll take one last look around and call it a video. Well, there it is. Probably one of the toughest bikes I've had to build. This one fought us from <laughs> from the very instant we put a wrench on it, uh, right up uh, until this morning when I got everything cleaned up. It went together beautifully after uh, having all the parts prepared and ready to go. Uh, I'll have to go back and look and see how long that took us, but uh, we didn't have any hiccups really throwing it, throwing it to... Uh, together this afternoon so that's awesome it ran great it rides great uh you know for who knows how old those tires are still got a few things i need to do i did not have any fork gators in stock so that didn't get replaced uh don't have a horn um you know it needs a tail light lens it needs some more cleanup that, you know, the tire rims and tires need painted and, and so forth. I did find a, uh, an air filter for the carb. So got that on there. I need to put a shutoff valve in line on the uh, fuel line and I need to do that chain guard yet. So I still have a few little things I need to do, but wow, what a, what a fun little bike to, to bring back. Uh, one that was, like I said, in really rough shape. Uh, I mean, I've seen ones that are in worse shape, you know, rusted out and those sorts of things. But for a bike that's actually capable of bringing it back, uh, every thread needed to be chased and, and so forth on this one. I don't know where it sat, but it, it got really rusty and must have taken in some water in the engine. But anyway, I'm rambling now. I also need to get some reflectors. I, I see I don't have those on there. But I'm, I'm sure you'll see this bike again. Uh, we'll bring it back and do some more updates. Keep tinkering with it. And uh, I, may even, I may even see if I can get a title for it. I don't know. Well, it's been a long time since I've gone through the Indiana BMV to, to get a title. To see, uh, see how that process has changed over the last 8, 10 years since I last used it. So anyway, guys, I'm signing off. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one uh, as much as I did. Getting to, to bring back a... Kind of a rusty old piece of junk, but uh, fun to ride. So, all right, guys. See you on the next video. Later.